Welcome to another episode of Growth Hacker TV. I'm Bronson Taylor, and today I have Daniel Falabella with us. Daniel, thanks for coming on the program. No, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Daniel, you are the co-founder of Spring Sled, uh, which you consider the world's simplest project management tool. That's what the, the tagline says. And you all actually got 130,000 beta signups in three weeks. Am I reading that right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty surprised too, but that's that's correct. I, I would be too. That, that's a lot of happening in a three year period there. Um, so when we started this interview, um, at first I had a list of questions I was going to ask you, just kind of the normal interview would do. Uh, but you had an idea that I liked. You said, "Why don't I just tell them step by step how we did it?" And then the viewers can actually get more value out of it, probably. Um, and I love that idea. So I actually don't know where we're going with this interview. I'm not sure what's around the corner. I'm probably going to learn a bunch of stuff, which is cool. Um, but we're just going to actually get into the process of how you all got 130,000 signups in three weeks. So let's start at the top. Um, what was step one? What was the initial kind of, it began here when we had zero signups? <laughs> yeah, so the first thing I think for any startup really is to create a website. Mm -hmm. in my mind. And so uh, the website that we have on springsled.com is, is very simple, minimalist. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason why is because we, we're not the greatest uh, designers, right? <laughs> so uh, we, everything, all the graphic design that you see on the website, actually we created on PowerPoint. So <laughs> awesome. super simple. We actually spent just maybe like three hours just putting the website up. Uh -huh. um, we did think the content through uh, but it's it's very very simple website. What we did decide to do on the website is to keep it very very um, just have a super high contrast on uh, the call to action. And so there's almost no color on the website except for get early access. Right? I got gotcha. It's a big call to action. So that's a super high contrast. So the website is really where we started. Very very simple. Um, so let me share some some of the stats I'm having right here on on the website that. Uh, reflects on yeah. some of the things. Yeah. Like so we have 42.5% conversion rate on that website. <laughs> we have two forms. So there's a top form and the bottom form. The top form, we have 76% of the, of the signups go to the top form uh -huh. and 24% to the bottom. That's awesome. But it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good conversion rate there on the site. Okay, so let me ask you this. You, know, you said that you, you, on purpose you had a high contrast and on purpose you used PowerPoint instead of getting a designer in. Um, is this one of those stories where the landing page, it looks simple, but there's actually a lot of thought on why you did what you did? I mean, you look at it and you're like, oh, they just picked a plain theme. But then you tell me you wanted high contrast on purpose, and now I'm like, oh wait, there was a little more thought put into it than I realized. Yeah, so we did put some thought into it, obviously, but it's not as much as people think, right? So if you okay. just use your instincts and say, hey, you know, this looks like something I would enjoy uh, looking at and I know exactly what I need to do next mm -hmm. then that will probably get it done yeah no obviously we've been we've been thinking about project management for quite a bit now for a couple months and so it's not like we just came up with the idea overnight and just put it up but it's you know we've been thinking about the messaging for a while but it's definitely something we just put up uh, yeah. in a couple hours now so you get the page up there um, you have two opt-in forms one at the top one at the bottom you have a high contrast site um, you have cheap ugly graphics sorry if that offends <laughs> You know, hey, you got 130,000 30, signups. You can't be offended. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, talk me through kind of the copywriting a little bit. You know, the visuals are PowerPoint. The copywriting, you don't have a lot of copywriting either. Was that on purpose? Uh, yeah, that was on purpose, right? So we're trying to portray as we're a simple project management tool. So we just want to keep our page simple to mm -hmm. kind of show that we can deliver. Uh, but at the same time, if we just if you just put a lot of content on the website, people would just get lost. Mm -hmm. And so if you just go to a website and there's you you understand exactly what you're trying to accomplish there, the, uh, the web, what the website's trying to accomplish, then that's more enough. There's no need to just uh, just put more buzz on the site, all right? So yeah, that's that's basically it. No, and that's crazy because you know I always have the fear of like, but they don't know what it does and they don't know enough of the features and I'm not selling it hard enough. When I go to Spring Sled, I honestly have no idea what this product is gonna look like. I don't know yeah. how it's gonna function. I don't know who it's built for as opposed to some other group like. I actually have way more questions and answers, yeah. and yet you got that many signups. So you think that actually worked in your favor that you just reduced the complexity instead of giving them information overload, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so if you if you have a like a web application, mm -hmm. 
you have a lot of steps that people need to go through in order for you to actually transact with those customers. Mm -hmm. So the first step really is to just get signups, have people actually give you their email address and you know, get started. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you can probably activate them and then they'll use it and then there's probably a couple of steps and then they'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at every single one of those steps, on every additional step, you lose out quite, quite a bit of people. Yeah. But on the first step of signups, it's actually really, really, really high. And so what we try to do is kind of leave it a little bit ambiguous so people just understand the vision of what we're trying to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. And we don't know exactly if it's going to be like a great product idea fit, mm -hmm. but uh, people will see the vision of what we're trying to accomplish, they understand it, and then we're trying to um, do growth hacking on the very, very, very first step. Absolutely. So Dropbox is awesome, right? But you do um, growth hacking once you're in the product, and obviously it's worked great for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what we try to do is we try to uh, grab the people that sign up where we get the most people, which is the very, very first step, and don't even show them the product and then growth hack them, mm -hmm. right? And then they will be sharing it and then we can invite them over and grab our conversion rates, right? But so right now we have one email that we bring uh, organically has brought 480 additional emails. That's our little coefficient there. Okay. So. If you don't do growth hacking the very first step, you're probably losing dozens of thousands of signups, right? Because okay. if you lose 300, you're going to lose 144,000. I got you. So you're telling me, if you think about the, the normal funnel of a website, whatever your funnel is, if you don't growth hack at the very beginning stage, then you're losing out on a large uh, potential you know, number of signups because every time you move down the funnel, you have less people you're working with. So if you can growth hack on the initial stage, that's when your audience is the widest by nature. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something uh, we can probably touch base later on, but uh, it's also a brilliant idea to do that early on, mm -hmm. to kind of uh, identify who's the right people to, to bring on board early on. And yeah. we can touch base on that, but yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay, so you have the landing page up. Um, it, it does all the things we talked about already. What did you do after that? Because you put up a landing page, who cares? <laughs> you know, yeah. join the crowd. <laughs> so yeah. what did you do to get some people on there and then what happened from there? Yeah, so if you sign up, uh, it's going to send you to another web, another page on the site mm -hmm. that basically says, hey, you're on our waiting list. You know, there's so many people that have signed up as well. Uh, if you want to cut in line and get the tool free for 12 months, then have five of your friends sign up with a unique URL that we created for them. Okay. So that's, that's the first thing people see, right? And All then right. there's two buttons. There's a share on Facebook and there's a share on Twitter button and that is it. Okay, so we got to dig into that because there's a lot happening there that I got follow-up questions with. Um, yeah. So first of all, just make sure I heard you right. Not only do they get to cut line, you're giving them 12 months free. Did I hear that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so walk me through that. Like you're sitting there and your team's thinking, how do we growth hack this thing? And somebody puts out the ridiculous idea, hey, let's give them 12 months free if they get five friends to sign up. Like I yeah. know that wasn't an easy, easy decision to make. Walk me through that a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so actually I got some of the numbers right here that I think you're going to find interesting. So we got um, we got 15% of everyone that signs up uh, actually invite at least one friend. Wow. So it's actually not a – I mean it's, it's a huge number, but it's in regards to percentage, it's not that big. Mm -hmm. And they only get five. So we got 7.7% .7 of our total signups actually get the reward of five friends. Okay. So what we're, what we're losing there is you know 7.7, .7, but we still got the rest, which is the vast majority, over 90% of the emails that we can monetize, right? So you. if we don't put a strong enough incentive, maybe we've gotten, we've gotten like 2% of people actually get their stuff. Yeah. But we would have lost on a considerable amount of emails, right? So the stronger incentive that you can give, the strong, you know, the more signups you're gonna get, obviously, yeah. right? See, here's so. the thing: like, we gotta. I have to make sure that everyone listening to this interview realizes how important what you just said is, right? Um, if you study internet marketing, what they all tell you is the offer is always the most important thing. You know, testimonials matter. The ease of sign up matters. All this stuff matters, right? What really, really, really matters is what is the offer? What do I get for how much money? What do I get for what I give you? Whatever that is. Um, and what you're saying is you just made them an offer that they couldn't refuse. I mean, I have the potential to get a year of this thing free. And I love one of the quotes, one of the tweets, or is it their Facebook or Twitter? Somebody said, I don't even know what Spring Sled does, but if you sign up, I could have a year free. So can, yeah. please, can people please go sign up? Like, yeah. That's what you're saying. You incentivize people to a point where they didn't even know what they were sharing and they wanted <laughs> to get their friends involved, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the vision, right? It's a simple project management tool. You have no idea exactly how... Is gonna work, mm -hmm. but 
that's what you want, right? People yeah. want just simplicity in their lives. And so, they, yeah, we give them a very strong incentive that it's hard, it's hard to say no to. But then you look at the math behind that incentive, and at first, I have to admit, I thought, man, they're going to give up a year of real revenue for a growth hack. And I was like, I don't, you know, I was like, I was trying to think through it. But what you just said made it click. What percentage really gets the incentive? 100% is not getting the free year. Some small percentage is bringing in a bunch of friends that are getting the free year. And so it's well worth it when you look at the overall numbers. And so I think that's another piece of it. So have a, an offer they can't refuse and have math that makes sense, even though it seems ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Now for us, I mean, yeah, we lose on foregone revenue, but we don't have a lot of costs associated with it. Yeah, we have server costs and we send a couple emails here and there for the next year. But in reality, I mean, with the, with the industry that we're in, there's a lot of drop off. There's a lot of people that go in and just test stuff. And if they don't like it, they get out. Yeah. And so there's a really good chance that the 12 people, you know, the 7.7% the of the people we invited weren't even going to use it for a whole year, right? Yeah. Maybe just a very few percentage would actually use it. And so, yeah, we might lose a, you know, a couple thousand dollars in foregone revenue, but we have no <laughs> cost associated, you know? Yeah, and, and how so, many but, users did you bring in because of that? It's well worth yeah. a few grand, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, and then also on the share buttons, you just have Twitter and Facebook. So you don't have LinkedIn, you don't have Pinterest, you don't have, you know, fill in the blank. Um, is that on purpose? You just wanted to hit the ones that actually would do the most good for you? You know, we have this big thing in our company, this is a debate between emergent strategy versus deliberate strategy. <laughs> deliberate strategy when you're like a brilliant guy and you just do everything because you're just brilliant. Uh -huh. But our strategy is pure emergent, right? So it's just, here's what we are, what can we do to just put this out fast? I like it. <laughs> so that, that's what it was, right? I don't know. I don't know how to connect with LinkedIn. Our developers do, uh -huh. but I was putting it up there. I, I'm coming from a business background. I have no idea how to code, right? Uh -huh. But I figured out how to put a Facebook and link it in somehow. So Facebook and Twitter it was. That's now awful. here's what's interesting, though. Part of, part of the reason why we did it as well is because if you add like LinkedIn, Google Plus, and all that stuff, you start having a, just a ton of buttons, and your call to action is like, oh, where do I share it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, if you add like a lot of stuff, I'll probably post it on Google Plus because I don't have a following there at all mm -hmm. and I don't want people to see, but mm -hmm. I still want to share it somehow. And so people would just like default to the easiest, crappiest one. I got you. Versus if you kind of almost force Facebook or Twitter, then you're going to have great results. So 90% of our total traffic on the site has come through Facebook. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> 5% has come through Twitter, yeah. and an additional 5% has come through everything else combined. So some people do get out of the way, they copy paste the link, they go to LinkedIn, post their friends, or send emails, mm -hmm. but 90% has come through Facebook, and so we're actually even debating just get rid of Twitter and just keep Facebook and just push everyone that, that yeah, channel. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question, is you know what, how the percentage breaks down, because that's been my experience too. You know, Twitter is a great place for really intelligent conversation, great connections, but at the end of the day, it's not how you get traffic in a lot of circumstances. And I've just learned that through trial and error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Okay, so, so you have the landing page. You have this crazy incentive they can't refuse. You have these, you know, a few options to share. Um, what's the next piece of the story? Where do we go from there? So here's where actually the, I would say like 95% of our results have come from this thing that I'm going to tell you. All right. Which is we send, once you sign up, we send you an email. Mm -hmm. And we say, we love you. Here's our gift to you. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we try to be kind of funny with our emails. But in essence, say, hey, thanks for signing up. We love you. We appreciate you as a beta user. We want to give you a gift. And that gift is, and we repeat the same thing that we put on, on that page, which is get five friends to sign up with this unique URL. You get the tool free for 12 months mm -hmm. and you get to cut in line. So it's just a reminder and in their emails, they can have that unique URL with them at all times. You can always go back to the website, but at least you got in an email. Yeah. And then the interesting thing is once one person signs up through that unique URL, we send you an email again. Mm -hmm. And we say one out of five. You're almost there, right? You need to get right, four more people. One person sign up, get four more, right? Mm -hmm. So at that point, you're like, well, this is, this is cool. I got one. I can probably do four more. So you share it again and you share it again. And then you got two out of five, three out of five, four out of five. Mm -hmm. And then finally you get five out of five and then you're all happy, right? Uh -huh. But in there we also say, hey, there's some secret rewards coming soon. So keep sharing to get those secret <laughs> rewards. So we don't even know what those secret rewards are, to be you honest. Come up with something though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll come up with something good, right? That's right. So we're, we're not going to let them down. We're going to do something good, but... Uh, but in reality, so it's it still gives it like, hey, if you want some other stuff that mm -hmm. 
it's kind of secret, then keep sharing, right? And we get some people sharing that as well. No, that's awesome. The email thing is such a good idea because it's like a personal coach now inspiring them to keep going down this route. Because I yeah. mean, I, honestly, last night I went through the flow for the first time when I was preparing for this and I signed up on the website, put in the email address, hit the landing page or the next page and I, I missed it. Like I didn't realize how big the offer was. I don't know how, but I missed it. I was in a rush. I don't know what I was doing. And then you sent me the email and I was like, wait, they're giving away 12 months free? Like that's when it hit me was in the email. And so then I'm like, wow, what a good idea to have that email because for whatever reason, that's the thing that registered to actually get how big this deal was. Um, And I haven't shared it yet, so I haven't seen the follow-up email of, you already got one, you got two. Um, But I can only imagine like how good that psychology is to get that reminder email, uh, you know, kind of moving you along further. And I've never really seen anybody do it that clean yet, you know, that well. And I think that is a real big part of the 130,000 signups. That's a great insight. Thank you. Yeah, again, we're trying to go for simplicity. So even the email is just right to the point. It is. (laughs) There's no scrolling. You know, and they're like, and keep sharing. Here's your link. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? Yeah. So here's the interesting thing. We were actually looking for. We thought there was already some plugin that you can just use for that. Uh-huh. And I was amazed there wasn't. So the closest thing that we can come up with is something like Launch Rock, mm-hmm. which after you sign up is just like a tiny little button says, "Oh, share." You know, like yeah. Facebook. Just like. That's almost to be honest. Mm-hmm. And so we had to build this whole thing, but we got like tons of people requesting um, access to their referral system. And so we're actually kind of spinning it off and say, hey, for all the startups out there that want to use this email referral system, mm-hmm. just plug in this kind of like an iframe to your website and the whole referral system is built. So yeah. we're like putting that, it's, it's going to be called Untorch, untorch.com. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're going to have the whole thing. But uh, again, we, we couldn't find anything like that. And that's, that's really the genius behind it is sending those, those emails once every, every time someone sends up through the unique URL. Yeah, I think that's actually going to be a really big product. <laughs> I, you know, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that product gets as big as the uh, project management product when it's all said and yeah. done. Because people, there is nothing like that. And I've had to do it before um, with Launch Rock. And I got 10,000 signups on a Launch Rock page. And it's like, that was work though, because you didn't have these extra things pushing them along. If I had, yeah. had those extra emails, I'm pretty certain I could have got a lot more than 10,000, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So let me share an example, right? So we got actually uh, not too long ago, you know, we're sitting around, we come up with an idea, we did the same thing, we put a landing page, this is before we did Spring Slide, we put up a landing page, um, very simple, very similar to how Spring Slide looks and feels, but uh, we didn't develop anything, and so we just send them to like a page saying, hey, share with your friends uh, for this gift with this unique unique URL, it was just kind of like hard-coded, <laughs> unique URL <laughs> yeah. to see people share. So we got 4,000 signups in a week from it, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. But after that, it just tanked. It was yeah. the end of that, right? Yeah. And then the difference between it is really we uh, on Springslet, we send you email reminders. And on the other one, we didn't. It seems right? like you guys broke through to the next level because I've done the same thing. I've had multiple things get 5,000 signups, 10,000 signups. But I've never had a landing page break through to the next level. And yeah. you had the same experience where you could get five but you couldn't get a hundred thousand, you know. Yeah. And so I yeah. think you actually just kind of cracked the code on where we go to add a zero to this number, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's awesome. So that was it. That was it for the incentives. That was it for the page and, and the emails. And I think that's uh, that was the vast majority of the reason why we got such a yeah. big impact. Yeah. Anything else that kind of plays into the story, or is that really the lion's share of what mattered? You know. I think that's 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 really it. Yeah. Now here's here's something else that that we're doing that it's actually super super impactful for us is once you reach your five, the email mm-hmm. that you get is saying, "Hey, you got five friends to sign up. Uh, we're gonna give you access to our beta within the next business day." Mm-hmm. And so what happens is the next business day, well, you get an invite from us to actually get the tool and start using it mm-hmm. uh, and its beta. So um, the reason why we love that. Is because if you think about the technology adoption cycle, you know, you got like the innovators, early adopters, and the yeah, whole I thing. Where you're going? <laughs> early majority, late majority, and all that stuff, right? Uh-huh. I've always thought that framework was awesome, but absolutely worthless. Mm-hmm. Because how on earth would I just screen out the early adopters from the from the innovators from the late from the laggards? Mm-hmm. There's no way. There's no way to do that, right? So there's a great framework, but at the end of the day. An application for me and my startup was absolutely worthless, mm-hmm. right? Um, until with a growth hacking, right? Because now 
we're getting people that just go into a very simple page. There might not be like a whole lot of content there, but they see the vision of, the, of our vision of what we're trying to accomplish, which is let's just bring simplicity into project management, right? And they love it, right? And so the people who are actually going to share it are the people who, by definition, are the innovators. Mm -hmm. So the people who are getting access to the tool are the innovators and the early adopters, right? Mm -hmm. And they get in early where we still have some bugs in our system or we still have some features to build. But they're the but innovators. They they're okay with it. Yeah, they're okay with it. They forgive us, right? Mm -hmm. And the amount of feedback that we're getting, like quality feedback, is incredible. And even though when we do something wrong, let's say the whole system crashes, right? And they, the feedback we're getting is, you guys are awesome. This is the best. By the way, your system crashed. Keep doing it. You know, you're, you're awesome, right? So even when they're giving negative like feedback, they're still uh -huh. doing it in a very positive way, right? Because they're the innovators, right? Mm -hmm. And then the people who are the laggards or the late adopters, what they're saying is they're sending an email saying, what the F, you know, how am I going to invite people over if I've never seen your tool, uh -huh. right? And we're like, well, there you go. You know, you're not an innovator. So by, we're not going to invite you until we have a product that is actually ready for you. That's so right. smart. So then the product cycle matches the adoption curve really well instead of it just being haphazard and making a lot of people frustrated in the process. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we love that inviting people who actually earn the right mm -hmm. to earn their reward <laughs> is actually being extremely helpful for us as we continue to develop a better better product for our users. Yeah. So that's the spring sled story so far. Uh, we'll see where it goes from here because, I mean, your numbers are just monster. You know, like you said, 70% conversion on the top form on the homepage. You know, you got so many people sharing it, uh, 130,000 signups. So let me ask you this. I was looking on your LinkedIn page, and you talk about some of your past projects. And beside one of them, you write the word failure. <laughs> you just put it out there. We did this. It didn't work, right? Um, how important is it to have those in the past that, yeah, you had a failure, how important is that to your success or is it just irrelevant? You know, I have mixed feelings about this. I, obviously, uh, if you do it right, you can always learn a lot from failures. Mm -hmm. But I'm from the point of view that the Lean Startup actually just went through like, it's another like big bubble, <laughs> you know, and, and it, a lot of people are now saying, you know, like, oh, you know, fail fast, fail fast. When in reality, is succeed fast. Like, do you have to succeed fast? And mm -hmm. sometimes to succeed fast, yeah, sure, you're gonna fail along the way, but succeed fast is not is never doing a startup is never about failing fast, mm -hmm. right? It's all about just getting to revenue and succeeding the fastest you can. Right. And so, yeah, there's a lot you can learn from failure. So I put it there, some stuff that I've done that is, yeah. you know, but it's all about succeeding, not about failing. Yeah, I like that a lot because it doesn't actually change what's going to happen in reality. To succeed fast, you're going to have to fail fast. But yeah. the emphasis has shifted so that failing is not glorified. It's just something you had to do sometimes to get to success. But success is still what's glorified now. So I like the way yeah. you put that twist on it. It doesn't change reality, but it changes the focus. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and then I get it. You know, lean startup, you know, you had to fail fast, you know, to succeed fast. But all the focus is put on the failing which right? is never the goal. It just yeah, it's, it's like, not right. what we're doing. <laughs> I might read a book and it's just me how to fail, you know? I want to <laughs> horrible. Succeed. You're right. That's so, awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Um, I got one last question for you. And it's a question that I always end every interview with on Growth Hacker TV. And it's, what's the best advice you have for any startup that's trying to grow? Um, you know, you can. there's a lot you can do with just bootstrapping without doing anything. So you got, for example, um, Robinhood, right? That's mm -hmm. got funding from Google Ventures and recent Horowitz. Mm -hmm. And sure, they got like 400,000 signups. But we did it, we're four guys. Right? We're four dudes with no investment and we're just trying to make it happen, mm -hmm. right? So um, to just to give you a comparison of what we accomplished, right? If we would have done an alternative um, marketing method for this, let's say we use Google Ads, it would have taken us 37 months and $2.2 million in cost to get the number of signups that we got in three weeks with pennies, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot you can do bootstrap if you just, just kind of just do it. Mm -hmm. Just stop thinking about what to do and just get on it and just do it. So that, that would be my, my uh, suggestion for, for other people. Well, I can't think of anything better to end on than just do it. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for coming on Growth Hacker TV. This has been an awesome interview. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me.